Hey guys, welcome to See or Not to See, and today we're going to be talking about Beauty and the Beast. So Beauty and the Beast is Disney's remake of their classic animated movie which came out during the Disney Renaissance in the 1990s. They have been on a roll remaking all of their classic animated movies into modern day live action remakes. And am I a fan of these remakes? Eh, not really. First off, let me go over real quick what I thought of the original Beauty and the Beast. I love it. I think it's one of Disney's best animated features. It's beautiful animation, it's just, you know, great voice acting, memorable songs, great characters. Absolutely love that movie. So when I heard that they were remaking it into a live action remake like they're doing with everything else now, I just thought to myself, wait, why? This is really one of those Disney movies I really wanted to see the least remade. I just... Why? Why remake it? Now, there are different types of remakes that I'm going to kind of break down real quick for you guys. You know, this is how I personally view them, and a lot of you are probably going to agree with me with this. The first kind of remake is the one that takes the source material that it's borrowing from and changes it and updates it and does something different with the source material to kind of put a new spin on it. An example would be the 1976 King Kong movie that I reviewed on this channel. No, oh, you see what I did there? You know, it was like a product placement for my own product in this video for you to go watch my other videos. The other type of remake is the 2005 King Kong, which was more like a tribute remake, you know, paying tribute to the original source material and, you know, bringing it to a new audience, which is another video you totally shouldn't go watch. Reverse psychology. And then there are remakes that just do the exact same thing as the original one, which makes it kind of pointless. And this is kind of one of those movies for the most part. I mean, if you're going to do the same thing as the original Beauty and the Beast, why remake it? I mean, it just seems kind of pointless, which this movie ultimately is. Now, I am going to talk about the plot a little bit in this movie, because I feel like, I know I usually try to stay away from the plot at all costs in my To See or Not To See reviews, because they're spoiler free, but I feel like since this movie is a direct remake of another famous movie that a lot of people are, are only going to see this movie because they saw the original one, I figured I wouldn't be spoiling anything. So, let's just get into it a little bit. Now, when Disney remade Cinderella in live action, they actually tried to update it and fix some problems that the original movie had. And I do love the original Cinderella, but they did some things like, you know, actually giving the prince a personality and expanding on some things that were kind of left in the shadows in the original movie. And that's what a good remake should do. But the problem is with Beauty and the Beast, there wasn't that many problems with that movie. The only problem I have with the original Beauty and the Beast is that it felt weird that, like, nobody knew about this prince or, you know, whoever who lived in this giant-ass castle outside the village who nobody, you know, that nobody knew about him. In this movie, they actually address that and make it so that, like, the hag that cursed him or whatever, like, made everybody forget about the castle, which I thought was okay. Other than that, though, that's really the only thing that needed to be fixed with that movie, so there wasn't much to improve on here, and that's where the big problem with this movie comes in to me. So they do expand on Gaston's sidekick, LeFou, and that was utterly kind of pointless. I don't know why that they expanded upon him for. That was kind of a random character. They also did that with some other characters in the movie that, like, the maid and everything. I really wasn't interested in these characters the first time I saw them, so I don't know why they expanded upon them. And let's address the elephant in the room, LeFou being gay. Okay, um... I don't care if he's gay or not, you know, as long as they're a good character. And just to be honest, I always kind of assumed he was, that he did have some kind of man crush or something on Gaston. You know, I just, I always assumed that. I'm sure a lot of other people did too, which was the reason I was thinking, why even bring that up in the movie if probably a lot of people already assume this character is gay? I don't know, I really don't want to get into that anymore because I feel like I'm going to offend probably half of you. I probably already have offended half of you and you probably are all unsubscribing to my channel right now for bringing this up, so I don't want to get any, I don't want to dig myself a grave anymore. Anyway, back to the movie. This movie feels like that they really relied on you seeing the original Beauty and the Beast to understand a lot of stuff in this movie because it feels like they really this one felt like it moved a lot faster than the original Beauty and the Beast. Like, they just chopped right through everything. And it comes off as being a choppy-feeling movie, almost like Suicide Squad or something, where it just moves so fast, so fast, so fast that you miss a lot. And I feel like they really rely on you seeing the other movie to get a lot of that. Also, guys, the special effects in this movie. Okay, I'll say this. The 
hand-built, actual, practical sets look amazing. This movie is a beautiful-looking movie. I can say that about all the Disney remakes. They look gorgeous. But then there are other scenes where it is very, very obvious that they are standing in front of a green screen, and it looks awful. Like, really bad. The Beast is probably the most disappointing part when it comes to the special effects. He looks pretty bad. He looks really fake. At first, like, when he's in the distance, in the shadows, he looks really cool. But then when you actually get up close to him and you see him, he looks so fake. This would have been somewhere where they really could have advantaged maybe, like, doing, like, a puppet or some kind of makeup job for the up-close shots and then CGIing him when he's, like, standing farther away or whatever. I know they could do that. I've seen them do that in movies like Lord of the Rings, Chronicles of Narnia. They could have just gotten a leftover Chewbacca mask and just put horns on it. And I think it would have looked way better than, you know, what we got. And that was... That was really disappointing because the Beast is like my favorite part of the movie because I'm a guy and I don't care about the dresses and the dancing and all that shit. That being said though, the movie does look gorgeous at times. The acting is all really good. I really, I loved Gaston. Well, this movie does a good job. Everybody does a great job. I love, you know, the servants and everything. I did have fun watching this movie, but overall I feel like it's just kind of a pointless movie in that you'd just be better off seeing the original. That's why, guys, like, I'm really split on what I'm going to have to give this movie, but I think I'm just going to have to give it a not to see because the original is so much better. So that's it for me, guys. As always, if you like what you see, you can go ahead and hit subscribe. You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter. The links are in the description below. Also, be sure to check out my website. The link is also in the description below. And remember, I waste my money so you don't have to. Thanks for watching.